Uh, once again, our friends, the Gearheads, are on to talk more about uh, their robot team, the team at Worlds last year. Great team to show off uh, their robot and capabilities here so far. Uh, looks like they got a lot going already on here. So why don't you guys introduce yourselves and walk us through what you've created here. Well, I'm Arnav. My name is Thomas. Uh, and my name is Sid. Uh, so here's a robot, and uh, we decided to use a whole bunch of uh, we we decided to use a whole bunch of servos uh, and motors to move around an arm, and that'll allow us to uh, pick up the caps and place them on each height of uh, the bars, and that that's going to be our main mechanism mechanism for making points for this 30-hour build competition. First updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. SOLIDWORKS is free for first teams. Over 80% of US engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first to register your team. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. All right. So when we approached the 30 hours challenge, uh, we first planned it out at our homes and we brought the, the, our robots from the past and materials we thought we need so that we could build it and use uh, past things from our other robots so that we could implement them much fa quicker. And once we got here, what we did is we all sat down together and we wrote down ideas on a big sheet of paper and we chose the idea that was the simplest, that would take the least time and that took the fewest materials to build. And then looking uh, from a few materials to build on here, so you guys have a lot of progress so far that you've, you've created on your robot. Is there anything else that, from a mechanical standpoint, is going to be added, and what's next to come for programming? Well, currently our mechanical status of the build, it's probably complete unless we add some stability changes or fix some bugs that are in there that could cause it to fail. And Sid, you're the program. Um, currently, we're using state machines to control the arm that is going to place the cones on the poles across the field, as well as work on the um, autonomous programs to, so we can get some basic points um, in the early autonomous stage. What are you looking for doing for autonomous? Tell us more about that. Um, right. So uh, for our autonomous program, uh, what we hope to do is, starting in our parked area, uh, move out to one larger um junctions, uh, move back and just park, seeing as, as of right now, that's what our robot can do. Uh, we don't have any sensors or um, abilities to sense out where the different patterned uh, cones are. So that's our autonomous uh, for now. Uh, post 30 hour challenge, hopefully we can get something a little better. Hey, we do have a question from a uh, chat coming in. We'd love to hear uh, more about that. So uh, Greg is me is asking, uh, are you worried about the uh, shock load to all the servos uh, that's currently on the robot? Can you, can you first off show us where all the servos are, and then let's talk about the, uh, the uh, shock load to that. All right. So uh, there's a bunch of servos in the robot, and uh, they're at sort of each joint. One's here, one's here, one's here, and then there's also finally a servo here and a servo that controls the arm opening and closing. So there's currently five servos on the robot. How do you shop? Okay, and what we're uh, the main thing that we're trying to do for uh, managing the shock of the of all the servos and all the movement at top as as the robot moves is uh, first of all we crimped all the aluminum so it's bent in U shapes uh, for more strength so it doesn't uh, bend or tip as easily. And the other thing was we ensured that the robot chassis has a wide base. And that's sort of all we can do for, about ma uh, managing shock without actually changing any other part of the arm. And yeah, before we go to our next question, as a reminder, chat, type in Never Rest if you're interested in winning those Andy Mark motors, the Never Rest motors that we're giving away. We'll draw for that uh, once this team is all done. Uh, question coming in um, from uh, a really long name. Uh, uh, do you think there will be uh, weight slash balance issues? We kind of asked this in the beginning, but uh, just to reiterate for chat on here, uh, they said when the arm is up, can the robot tip over? Have you, have you actually tried to tip the robot over yet or anything? Nope. Can you try it now? 
Uh, we'd have to probably turn it on and see, but we well, I mean, you can just push it. We'll see what happens. Push it. Yeah, push it. Let's move it up. Let's see. With the arm all the way up. Yeah. <laughs> At the most vulnerable point. All right. Here we go. Now, and of course, then there's going to be the weight of a cone in there as well, too, uh, to keep in mind uh, as well. So extra weight potentially uh, with that. And of course, they'll get a driving tomorrow as well. We're you know just a few hours in for that, but we'd love to show off any demos that we can uh, for this. So I think that's an interesting question of the servo load, if that might potentially happen, right? But from a tippy wise, it didn't look too bad. I know you look worried. I don't think it's as bad as it looks uh, on there as well, too. But uh, so, of course, look forward to seeing uh, how you uh, uh, keep accomplishing more and more. Is there anything else in your robot that you want to highlight or, or showcase or focus on? And I know we kind of alluded to this uh, a little bit uh, tomorrow or for tomorrow, but like, where do you guys want to be by tomorrow morning? What's kind of your objectives? Um, definitely to like, uh, practice a little bit just movement of the robot as well as work on the autonomous code and just get as ready as we can for the competition tomorrow uh, a couple questions coming in x2 noble uh, asking uh how will you approach design iterations after a robot in 30 hours so uh, once this is all done how are you going to approach your design iterations um after that we'll probably start like um like look at what other people have done other ideas that have been circulating as well as move forward with basic cad and um, break down the game in more um, depth to just see what subsystems we would need to be more most successful this season. Uh, question coming in. I, I know we talked about this a little bit before to uh, Mystic uh, ZX4 asking, how do you manage to do so much in just 30 hours? And I think part of this was already the, the drive chassis was kind of already done prior to that, right? Yeah, the drive chassis was already done as well as the robot was basically, the drivetrain was basically configured and programmed. Um, another thing is the claw that we were using wasn't 3D printed today. Rather, it was taken off an old robot that we used, um, which also saved us a lot of time because that would have taken a taken probably a majority of our time just to 3D print and attach. And, and I think that's a good point that you bring up. It's kind of what is the goal of Robot in 30 Hours, right? It's not necessarily to build a brand new robot. It's to show off what can be done and what capabilities are as well, too. So scavenging and using parts, very common amongst teams in a robot in 30 hours as well. Uh, so uh, thanks a lot, by the way. Uh, to uh, the team coming up. Uh, oh, great, great other question I want to ask you. Uh, what are some tips on using CAD effectively? It's, I'm not sure if your team would be best to answer that, but if you guys need anything with CAD, do you have any tips for CAD work? For, for CAD? Yeah. Um, I would just say that how we've been CADing the robot, especially since last year, is start with individual subsystems and then being on the whole. Um, I think that the biggest thing is you want to start with looking at what you need in terms of the game. So last year's game was much different than this year's game. So you want to evaluate your options and then start CADing. And I would also say that a thing that we ran into is we would like to rather than produce it and then realize it the dimensions are wrong or something isn't working, you want to make sure that your CAD is very um, thorough and so that you build once essentially and don't go back and forth and waste time. All right, last question we're going to ask for the scene. Then we're going to move on to the Kraken Pinion uh, coming through from uh, that Jossic or jo that Joss C. Uh, how will you run all three arm servos in the code efficiently? Um, so we were using basic state machines that we used last year um, in order to make sure that, for example, if we were um, trying to place a cone on this medium, on the medium pole, that the servo on the bottom wouldn't um, stop and cause the cone to fall and then also cause us not to potentially place the, um, place the cone on the pole. So we found early success with that last season in last season's game. So we decided to use that again today because of the amount of servos we're using. Uh, for any of those who don't know what a state machine is, it's, it's basically where you can press one button and it'll uh, perform multiple actions at once so that you, you can only, you, you, all you can think about is what level do I want to put the, one of the cups on? And you can click one button and the servos will all move in a specific orientation and you don't have to worry about that at all and it'll be perfect every time. Well, Gearheads, thank you so much for uh, telling us about your robot. We're going to let you get back to work. Good luck the rest of the way. Of course, we'll see you reveal in about 20 hours. Thanks a lot, guys. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. First alumni and mentors are making Stryker a top priority for their internships and careers. That's because Stryker knows that those in first are the leaders and innovators of tomorrow. If you want to help make the world a better place by creating life-saving medical devices and technology, get started at careers.stryker.com. 
SOLIDWORKS is free for FIRST Teams. Over 80% of U.S. engineering schools and 370,000 plus companies use SOLIDWORKS to design great products. SOLIDWORKS can help you design a great robot on desktop or on the cloud. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com slash FIRST to register your team. Special thanks to Team 8680, Cracking Pinion for hosting Robot in 30 Hours and also to their sponsors.